Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangle. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by Fully Funded Life. My name is Whitney Purcell, and our team is committed to giving you right now relevant information to help you in your money journey. Today's episode is number 217. And we're going to be doing an encore episode of our most popular episode thus far. And that is our creating a budget that actually works. As you'll notice, it's me by myself. Uh, Joe is out this week celebrating his anniversary with his beautiful wife, Jen, and they are on the road. So I am hopping on to introduce this episode um, that's going to be releasing to you August 29th. And we are in full swing of most everyone has started back to school. And people are kind of gearing up for Labor Day weekend, but we wanted to bring this episode to you today. Um, It is one by far our most popular episode that we've done so far, and we feel like it's really relevant to today, not only as you're getting back into the swing of things with day-to-day life, maybe you broke that budget over the summer, um, or maybe you've just been off the rails with travel and not in a routine. So we thought today would be a great time to regroup and work on budget stuff. So we wanted to play our most popular episode yet. Um, But before we get into that, we're going to dive into everyone's favorite time, and that is current money event section. Now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. The Monday Money Tip podcast is sponsored by the Fully Funded Life Membership Program. The Fully Funded Life Membership Program provides all you need to begin winning with money and live a fully funded life. Fully Funded Life includes four key components, courses, challenges, coaching, and community. Courses provide financial education. Challenges help you make massive progress in a specific money skill. Coaching is provided by the Fully Funded Life Certified Coaches through open office hours held multiple times each month. All of the courses, challenges, and coaching results in an outstanding community that help equip, motivate, and encourage you to take your next financial steps toward your fully funded life. Fully funded life, courses, challenges, coaching, community. All that's missing is you. Learn more and receive a special offer for Monday Money Tip listeners today at fullyfunded.life slash MMT. That's www.fullyfunded.life slash MMT. For today's current money event, I wanted to share some thoughts from an article I was reading on MSM.com. The article is discussing how our economy may be declared in a state of recession later this year. I know there's been some good promising inflation reports recently and low unemployment rates. However, as we all know, we felt that sting when we're going to the gas pump or to the grocery store. Now, I don't know about you, but in my neck of the woods, Gas prices have gone down just a little bit, at least. They're a little more reasonable than they were earlier this year. But going to the grocery store, man, there are things that are 50 to 100% increase from what they were a year ago. I was talking to my family this past week about how chicken was $1.99 less than a year ago. And now it's like $3.50 sometimes, $4, depending on where you get it per pound. So, you know, that's, that's going to cause a little bit of a sting. So we'll be on the lookout over the next several months through the end of the year and maybe into the first part of next year to see if the National Bureau of Economic Research declares an official recession. In the meantime, though, this article was talking about Warren Buffett's three tips for surviving a recession. And I just thought this would be helpful information, whether or not we're declared in a recession or not, we all feel the pinch of inflation right now. And I thought these were great tips, um, things that we think about as well. Here at I Was Broke Now I'm Not when we're looking at investing. Um, So these three tips, I'm gonna dive right into the first one. The first one is keep a long-term outlook. And what they're talking about with that is don't get short-sighted. When things start to kind of, um, when stocks start to kind of like decrease in value, don't get panicky and sell everything. Look at whether or not you think the company is healthy and they're going to weather that because what you don't want to do is sell as it's going down and then have to buy back when it raises back up. So just think about long-term perspective and know whatever you do when you're investing in stocks that there's going to be ebbs and flows. The second tip was actually to invest more. 
I know Joe talked about this a lot. And, you know, some of these things are things we've been learning and putting into practice the last couple of years, um, especially at the height of COVID. When things started, you know, happening, we saw stock going down and then going back up and all over the place. Um, but what Warren was talking about here and what Joe will tell you too is look for companies to invest in when the stock market is going down because you may be able to get a good stock at a lower rate. Um, so the third tip plays right into that and that's focus on quality investments. When you are looking at those investments or stocks to buy in the middle of um, a recession and or you know, an economy that's dipping here and there, you don't want to just buy the shaky stock or the company that's a big gamble. What you want to do is look for companies that you think are healthy and are going to weather the recession or weather whatever we're going on right now or going through right now and invest in those different companies. That's going to give you a better long-term result for your money. So make sure, you know, Joe has talked a lot about how to research stock and um, what you should be buying. He shares his investments every year. If you're part of Fully Funded Life, that's something where he walks through how he analyzes and decides on his stocks that he purchases and when to buy and sell. He talks about actual, his actual investments. Um, but one thing I wanted to do, a little promo for everyone. I know this is the end of August, but coming up in October, we are going to be doing what we call Oxen Month. And that is investing. It's going to be our first ever investing challenge. We're going to have Facebook Lives for all of those members of our Fully Funded Life community. So if you're not already part of our Fully Funded Life community, you really need to think about signing up, being a part of our investing challenge, getting the inside scoop during the month of October for all of those Facebook Lives talking about investing. We'd love to see you there. But in the meantime, we're going to link this article um, in our show notes. And it's just some easy tips to surviving, whether it's an official recession or the pinch that we all feel in our wallet because of inflation. So I'm going to share a new success story for us today, because even though this is a throwback to our original episode, we still wanted to celebrate current successes. So I'm going to read this for you. I have not read it yet, so I can't wait to hear about what's going on. Today's success story comes from Carol, a fully funded life member who is finding more success with support and encouragement of a like-minded community. She said, my husband and I were a bit stuck, even though God had helped us meet several of our goals. This group is helping propel us forward and gain the insight we need to steward God's resources with more clarity and focus. You can make great progress when you have a support system. Man, I just love hearing that from Carol. Uh, and I love how that came right after I was talking to you about getting involved in Fully Funded Life. And the reason that we want to do this, and we talk about this so often, is that we really want you to experience community. And because we know that, you know, just like if you're on a diet or if you're working out, that's why you go to the gym. That's why you get involved. And um, if you're trying to do something, creating accountability for yourself is so important. So Carol, thank you so much for sharing this. And we're so excited to see you move forward in your money journey. So we can't wait to have more stories like this um, and to hear what you guys are experiencing in your own personal finance walk. So now without further ado, we're going to jump in and revisit our first episode and by far our most popular Monday money tip episode ever from January, 2018 creating a budget that actually works. Thanks so much. And so I want to make sure everybody uh, can be able to have a budget that actually works. You, you do know that having a budget is not normal. Most of your friends don't have a budget. Most of your family does not have a budget. But I would ask this question, are most of your friends and most of your family winning with money? And I would say, probably not. And so here's the key quote that I'm going to share multiple times as I talk today, and that is this, if you care, you will prepare. If you care about something, it will force and command and demand that you prepare for it. So if you care about your dreams, if you care about your long-term plans and hopes and things that you dream about accomplishing with your life, then it will demand that you prepare financially. And so here are some keys that really helped me get a budget that really worked for my family and has allowed us to do this now for over 15 years every single month. That's 180 months, wow. 180 months of budgeting. Can That's you believe crazy. that? That's crazy. 
180 months, every single month before the month begins, 180 budget meetings, plus a few extras uh, to fix the <laughs> broken ones. And here's some things that I learned. The first thing is you need to prepare this plan before the month begins. Uh, if you do this after the month begins and after you get paid and after you've started paying some bills and buying some groceries and going out to eat, it's like documenting history and it's not allowing you to have true control of your financial flow, your cash flow. And so prepare it before the month begins, before those bills show up, before you get paid, because then it gives you the most important factor in all of this, and that is time. It gives you time to identify gaps, uh, to be able to say, hey, we have a shortfall this month, and it allows you to cut out some expenses or figure out how to make extra money and get you in position to truly prosper through the month. If you run out of money on the 22nd of the month, you're done for you're going to end up pulling out the credit card and right. swiping. Yeah. But if you plan before, it'll help you greatly. And everybody does this differently. Uh, some people do this uh, on a Google document. Others take our free tools that are located at IWasBrokeNomNot.com under the budgeting tools, and they store it on their computer. Others, they use our app, the I Was Broke, Now I'm Not app. Uh, others write it down on a piece of paper. I don't care where you do that, although I think it's a lot easier to do it you know, with one of our tools because does the math, you know, for, does you. The math for us. <laughs> and many people are listening. I know you'll agree with me that Satan himself invented math. And so we remove Satan from your finances. You're welcome. But here's, here's the second thing is as I learn about upcoming expenses, you know, things like a field trip that's coming up in the summer or some camp we want to send our kids to or property taxes due on our car or our house, uh, insurance to, uh, premiums that are going to have to be paid that are quarterly or semi-annual. We make a note of those, and we start saving for them monthly. So if they're more than $200 or $300, we make sure we save for them monthly. We call them known upcoming non-monthly expenses. We have a known upcoming non-monthly expenses calculator also located on our website. And man, the whole key is if you do not save for taxes, have you ever had an expense kind of show up? You knew it was coming, but it showed up, and when it did, it surprised you? Megan? A lot of people say that Christmas is that for them. Yes, Christmas, that's right. <laughs> they forget and about we're, it. We're, you know, Christmas season is just over, <laughs> and everybody's getting reminded of their financial misbehavior in the mailbox right now. And you know what I know is that used to be my case. I used to celebrate the birth of our Savior by crying. spending it on a credit card. <laughs> you know what and I'm saying? And then crying about and it. And then crying about it. And uh, I want it to be joyous. And so 15 years ago, we put together a plan of how much money we're going to spend. We put a name down and how much money we're going to spend. We budgeted it. And we also started saving every month, January through November, how much we wanted to spend for Christmas. And the money was just there. That is huge towards making sure that your budget does not get nuked month to month. Yeah. And a lot of people would ask the question, you know, you say you've been budgeting for you know, 15 years, but a lot of people are just starting. So how long would it take them to get started, to find a budget that works, to get that in place, and to really feel confident going into the next month? That, that's a great question. And I would say your first month's going to be wrong. In fact, I encourage you to put a line item in the budget called We Forgot <laughs> and put some money in it because yeah. you are going to forget. And hear me on this. Uh, if you forget something and you allow that to say, this just doesn't work. The only person that pays the price is you. You can call me and say budgets didn't work for me. Uh, it's nice that it worked for you, Joe, but it didn't work for me. But I would say, no, it's, you didn't give it enough time to form a new habit. Uh, uh, David Nimmons in our office all the time says, form good habits. They're just as difficult to break as bad ones. And I find it takes about three months, about 90 days to form this good habit of budgeting so you get great at it. Another tip that really helped me stick to my budget is achieving rung number two of the I Was Broke, Now I'm Not ladder. And again, we have a free downloadable copy of the ladder. It's kind of how you can figure out what your next financial decision is. But rung one is to determine your plans, hopes, and dreams. And rung two, the very next step, is to save one month's worth of expenses in savings. And the reason that's so important is it allows you to, whether you're, you're getting paid weekly or biweekly or twice a month, it allows you to go to monthly budgeting. And monthly budgeting is so much easier than paycheck to paycheck budgeting. If you want proof, think about how paycheck to paycheck living has helped you 
and how much chaos it might have caused in your life. And I encourage you, sell some stuff in the garage, work that side job, that side hustle, that overtime to get that one month's worth of money and savings because that will allow you to go to the monthly budgeting, which is so much easier. It, and one of the reasons it's easier is it allows you to do automatic bill payments. Do you, do you have any bills that you pay automatically, Megan? We do. It makes it so much easier. You know, you don't have to. What bills do you pay online monthly, automatically? Um, gosh, I'm trying to think. My honestly, my husband is the one that actually is the bill payer in our house. So, um, but there's there's bills that you get, and they they have the option, and they give you the option if you just look on the right. bill to do that automatic. And it makes it so much easier because you're you know you see the bill come in, and you know okay this is going to be coming out. Yep. So you know what you know it's coming. You know you know. I bet you pay Netflix on, automatically. Netflix, Hulu, Hulu automatically. I yeah, bet you pay power bills. I mean, here's what I would just say: if if you the number one reason why people do not pay bills automatically is because they do not have money in the bank. Yeah. They don't have margin. And I will tell you, listen to me. One month's worth of expenses put into savings. Listen, in the next month, you're going to get a tax refund. Most people are going to get a tax refund. Why not put it straight into savings? I know you want to spend it. I know you've got some fun. I know you want to pay off those credit cards from Christmas. But why not put it in savings instead? Because that will allow you to go to automatic bill payments, to have a budget that actually works, allows you to absorb those I forgot expenses so that you can prosper and make budgeting your new habit this year. I would just say one last thing, and it's this quote that I started with. That is, if you care, you will prepare. So stick with this for three months. It'll get so much easier. And when you do so, you're going to end up being one day, I think, being able to say, I budgeted for 180 straight months. And let me tell you something. It's what took me from being broke as a joke and $4.13 in my bank account to truly prospering, truly being able to say surplus and being able to fund dreams. And that's what I want for everybody. Wow, that's great. And I think one thing to, to really note, to put a kind of a, a end cap on this is that your budget has to be realistic. You know, you have to include things in there. You know, if you if you give $4 for your <laughs> grocery budget, you're probably not going to stick with it. That's it. You know, if your family really enjoys doing X, Y, and Z, really enjoys going to the movies maybe, you know, like maybe put some of that in there, maybe not make that all of your budget, but at least some of it. So include some fun in there to make it attainable for your family. And then also one of our favorite sayings here at I Was Broke Now I'm Not is income minus outgo equals exactly zero. That's and right, trademark. trademark. <laughs> Um, and that, I think that's huge for our listeners to remember as they are preparing this budget, as they're going into, you know, a new year, each time you sit down before the month begins um, to create that budget, really remembering income minus outgo equals exactly zero. And if you use our tools, it, it makes it super easy for you. The box turns green when you're good. It's yellow when you're almost there. And it's red, red when you need to do some work on it. So that that's really huge. And that's a great thing very practical that you can do um, and really think through as you're creating that budget. That, those are great tips. And I, I just want to sum it up. Do a budget for the month of January and follow it and then send us your wins. We want to hear about the wins and we can't wait to see the success story. We know this, planned money, it will go way farther than unplanned money. That's awesome. So we're going into uh, one of our favorite times of Uh-oh. the show, and it is the hot seat time where we get to ask you any and every question. So if you're listening and you have a question for Joe, it could be related to finances. It could be related to his love of hunting. It could be related to his family, anything. Um, feel free to send that to us, and we'll make sure we ask him at the most inopportune moments. Oh, I'm nervous now. <laughs> So our, our first question today in the hot seat are, is, uh, what are some things that someone can do to increase their income if they can't make their income cover their outgo? Uh, I would just, uh, that's a great question. Uh, well, you're much more desperate when you can't cover outgo. Right. Uh, so there's a certain amount of energy with it. Uh, but I would say this applies to anybody. It's sign up for overtime, go get a second job, sell some stuff, go to the front of the garage, find out what you haven't used for the last 10 years and make it leave. Craigslist. I know people that go to the local, um, just like Salvation Army and Goodwill, and they go and hunt stuff and they resell it on eBay and Craigslist. And they literally have had months where they made more money doing that 
than they have with their monthly salary. Wow. It's incredible. Now, the garage has turned into a little bit of an inventory uh, <laughs> issue, but I will say that being able to move stuff that you don't use anymore Man, a lot of people have money just sitting in their garages, in their barns, in their attics that they could convert. And man, it's worth having that peace of mind to have margin and be able to cover that that gap that they're experiencing. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, our next question is, what are some ways someone can decrease their spending even if they're already gotten rid of all the excess spending? Okay. So I've ha- I hear this all the time. We have cut it to the bone, Joe. It's all gone, and I still can't make this work. Uh, what, what are some other places to save money? And I would say we all have blinders on, but one of the things I would say is share expenses with someone else. Is there a way to share it? You know, perhaps, just perhaps you could share a Netflix subscription, of course, only with people within the same household and that sort of thing. Uh, share an internet connection. Uh, uh, you could also buy a remote and watch your neighbor's TV through their window. Just stand outside and change it. I think that's great. We don't it's recommend $5. that. <laughs> uh, you could get a roommate, and roommates can be uh, frustrating. They can also be great because they can split your cost in half or by a third. And then I would encourage you to sit down with a financial coach. We've trained coaches all over the U.S. and Canada and let them have a third-party look at it because many times we have blinders to our own expenses, and they can see it and point it out many times. It is obvious to them what is not obvious to us. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, that's those are some great some great ways that people can decrease their spending even if they can't cover the outgo. So, uh, wow, what a great episode. Thank you so much for all of your insight on budgeting and just um, really helping Sarah. I feel like if you're in Sarah's shoes or maybe if you are Sarah, um, These are just some great practical next steps that you can take when it comes to budgeting. We can't wait to hear about your wins as you create your budget. Please let us know um, if you, your wins as you, uh, as you accomplish those. And and that's, it's just going to be great. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear everyone's wins. Um, So on our next episode, um, you're not going to want to miss it. We're going to be discussing a challenging topic of budgeting with irregular income. It's literally one of the most asked questions that we get. So many people, so anyone who works off commission, if they're self-employed, maybe you're a hairdresser or a landscaper, have a hard time predicting their income, and that can create special challenges when it comes to budgeting. We want to set you up for financial success if that's you or if it's anyone that you know that deals with this challenge. So if you deal with irregular income, if you're not sure you know, how to create a budget, or if you say our fa- our least favorite phrase of, I can't budget because I have irregular income. If you feel like that's you, make sure you tune in to our next episode. It's going to be great. Joe, thanks so much for joining us today. And thanks so much for your insight on budgeting. It's a privilege fired up. Awesome. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast. Presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.